Poland is building something big along its eastern edge. It's called the East Shield, a massive defense line filled with sensors, cameras, bunkers, and anti-drone systems. All of it is wired together to detect threats early and respond fast, before anything dangerous gets deep into the country. But this isn't just about Poland. This could shape how NATO defends its front line in Eastern Europe. So in today's video, we're breaking down what the East Shield is, how it works, and why it might be one of the most important defense projects in Europe right now. Let's take a closer look. The East Shield is a Polish national deterrence and defense program approved in 2024 with work planned through 2028. Officials describe it as the largest strengthening of Poland's eastern border since 1945, with funding set at more than 10 billion złoty, or around $2.75 billion. Polish authorities explicitly frame the project as a response to the deteriorated security environment in Eastern Europe after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, with the goal of raising the cost of any cross-border aggression and buying time for reinforcement. The concept mixes physical fortifications, including bunkers, obstacles, ditches, and shelters, with an electronic surveillance layer. Expect towers with day and night cameras and thermal imagers, ground sensors, and counter UAS posts positioned along key sectors. Construction began in late 2024 and is continuing year-round as the build-out moves sector by sector. Poland is also coordinating its approach with nearby allies to close gaps along the broader northeastern flank. So how exactly is it supposed to work? In a crisis, obstacles and prepared positions, slow vehicles and infantry and channel movement into mapped lanes. Forward sensor masts and mobile radar detachments then reveal anything trying to bypass or breach the line. That picture flows into Poland's national command network so that shooters positioned inland can engage with the right effect and at the right time. Think of East Shield as the tripwire and spotlight at the border, while the layered missile batteries behind it act as the hammers. That layered network rests on a common digital backbone. Poland is fielding the Integrated Battle Command System, or IBCS, to connect radars and launchers across services. The first IBCS-enabled battery has reached initial operational capability, and industry reporting notes continued deliveries of IBCS components. The aim is to let disparate sensors share a single air picture and assign the most suitable interceptor automatically. So long-range, medium-range, and short-range units fight as one system rather than separate islands. At long range, Poland's WISWA program employs US-made Patriot launchers with modern interceptors. Initial batteries and missiles have been delivered, and follow-on packages add more launchers, radars, and support. A recent logistics and sustainment agreement keeps the force supplied, trained, and ready as additional elements arrive later this decade. As WISWA grows and ties into IBCS, coverage deepens and integrates more sensors. Medium-range defense comes from NARO, based on MBDA's CAM family on Polish launchers. After early, Mawa NARO units validated the integration pathway, the government activated execution contracts for CAM-ER missiles adapted to IBCS, along with eye launchers and Polish radar and command posts. Deliveries run into the second half of the decade, with the intent that Nauru units share tracks and tasking with Patriot under IBCS. Closer to key sites and along portions of the border belt, Poland is fielding short-range and very short-range defenses, Palika plus batteries combine twin 23mm guns with CAM I launchers and Polish Bystra 3D radars with counter UAS features built in. Separate Poprad vehicle launchers and Piorin man portable missiles thicken the low altitude layer against drones and helicopters. Contracts add logistics, training packages, and support equipment with deliveries stretching toward the end of the decade. In parallel, 
Poland has procured additional Bystra radars destined for these formations, which improves the quality of the local air picture and queuing for interceptors. A few points are still emerging. Official sites outline the East Shield timeline to 2028 and the overall budget, and government briefings describe fortifications, surveillance towers, and prepared shelters along several hundred kilometers of border. Reporting through mid-2025 indicates round-the-clock work on parts of the line, with moves to add controlled obstacle fields in selected sectors. What remains less visible are sector-by-sector -sector details like obstacle density, the final count of fixed positions, and the distribution of air defense units tied to each segment. These will evolve as Nauru, Pilika Plus, and additional Patriot elements are delivered and tied into the national network. Now the question is, why does this program matter? First, East Shield turns the Eastern Frontier into an early warning and engagement zone. With obstacles shaping movement and sensors providing persistent observation, targets are more likely to be found and tracked than engaged by layered shooters under IBCS. That raises the odds against cruise missile raids and drone incursions and complicates any ground push before it reaches key routes and the Vistula line. Second, it spreads risk and preserves forces. By pushing sensing forward while keeping many shooters back, the design reduces the chance that a single strike can blind or suppress the network. The approach is built to buy time for reinforcement and to protect critical infrastructure while allies mobilize. Third, it is a regional signal. Poland is aligning East Shield with neighboring fortification plans and presenting the line as a contribution to Allied security, backed by visible construction on the frontier and a growing inventory of interceptors and radars. Poland's East Shield is not an air defense wall on its own. It is a fortified border and sensor belt built to hand targets to a national web of long, medium, and short-range systems behind it. The full picture will sharpen as IBCS links more units and as additional launchers, radars, and sector works are delivered through 2028. So, what do you think? Will this mix of obstacles, sensors, and layered SAMs set a new standard on NATO's front line? Or will cost and timelines be the real test? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for the latest defense news and analysis.